to be in God's house tonight. I'm glad you're here. We welcome each and every one of you, all the visitors. Appreciate you coming to watch your children or grandchildren, niece or nephew uh, or relative get baptized. May God bless you. We're going to let the choir do one more. They're sounding really good. I want to sing this song, and it's so true, so very, very true that everybody in this building can say amen to this song. All right? Come on, choir. Oh, as I look back on all of my days, so many times, so many ways, I have been blessed, and all I can say is God has been good. Sometimes life brings sorrow and pain, sometimes the tears fall like the rain, but through it all, he's never changed. God is still good. God is still good when the waves roll high. God is still good all through the night. When I've done all I can and I don't understand. God is still good. Clouds of doubt may dark and the way, but showers of blessings will come any day. times when I've let him down, made my mistakes, still I have found I may stumble and fall, but through it all, God is still good, yes he is, mercy still flows from the palm of his hand, he will give grace and help me to stand, although he knows how unworthy I am, God Still good. Understand, God is still good. Clouds of down, they darken the way. Our showers of blessings will come any day. He'll bring me through, and I'll stand and say, God is still good. Clouds of down, they darken the way. Our showers of blessings will come. everybody take a hymn let's turn to page number 409 first and last I know whom I have believed as the choir comes down on the last verse would you stand
All right, everybody shake hands. Let's welcome our visitors, all right? Let's welcome our visitors tonight. Everybody fellowship. Everybody welcome somebody to the house of God tonight. Have our ushers come on, okay? I want our ushers to come on in. the service right along and our ushers are up here they're in place are also our most of them are also our safety team so uh, we don't expect you to go to another church to put your tithes and offerings here we don't we don't ask anybody to ever do that but we're going to pass the offering plates for our people to give their tithes and offerings and of course if you want to do something that's totally up to you all right let's let them play and i want brother paul abbott to come brother paul i saw you somewhere Where'd you go? I want you to come up here and pray with us in a minute. And uh, yeah, you can come in a minute, but uh, play for us. God bless you while they serve you, all right? Thank you very, very much to our folks. I would like to t announce again tonight that uh, we just found out about it just a little bit ago, but uh, the Robinson family actually has Caroline back up at the emergency room right now. So we want to remember Caroline that uh, I don't know what all this is going on, but they're going to maybe do a CT and all that kind of stuff. But pray for Caroline Robinson, all right, and that family. I uh, appreciate Brother Paul Abbott and his family, many of his family still here. Mom, mom, well stand, stand up, Mom. This is, the, this is the matriarch of this family right here. 
this is amazing. And Brother Dean Abbott, her husband, Dean, was one of our deacons faithful for many, many, many years here at Mountain View Baptist Church. God bless you, Miss Barbara. But this is, uh, I guess he's the youngest son. I'm not sure. Are you the, no, you're not. You're the oldest. This is the oldest son. Sorry, Steve. Sorry, Steve. I didn't know. I didn't know. But he, he's actually a judge or a magistrate, so please stay on his good side because you don't want to stand before him. I've heard that he will literally throw the book at you, all right? Come on, Brother Paul. Pray for us. Dedicate the offering. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you for all our blessings. Thank you for letting us uh, be here, Lord. We thank you for this special service tonight, yeah, the yeah. baptism. We thank you for the new believers. And yeah. we pray, Lord, you just uh, protect them and grow them and yeah. uh, let them uh, grow to spiritual uh, maturity. And yeah. they, they, one day they would be leaders, uh, Lord, in the church. And we, we pray for every aspect of the church. We pray for Preacher Steve here tonight. That you give him a word for those who are rejoicing yeah. and, and also those who are hurting. And we thank you for uh, the tithes and the offering. We thank you for the ability and opportunity to earn a living and then to give some back to you. And we just pray that you would just take over this service tonight, bless it, lead, guide, and direct us, forgive us of our sins, for we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Paul. All right, this is our first song. We've got one group. We've got another group. Then we're going to, then we're after this second group, we're going to dismiss the candidates. We've got 16 people to baptize in just a little bit. So I'll go get changed. We'll do a congregational, let you fellowship. That's the order of the service, but we're glad you're here. I mean it. We are thrilled and glad that you're in the house of God with us tonight. Let's worship with our singers, all right?
Smith and his family one more, then we're going to say just a word out of the scriptures, all right? Y'all ready? This is our youth choir leader, Brother Cam Smith, all right? Come on, y'all. When I was lost in my sin, I remember well that night when the Lord saved my soul from hell. And I thank God every day for his grace on me because I'm washed, I'm redeemed, and I've been saved. altar where I prayed Jesus washed my sins away and oh how sweet is the sound I once was lost but now I'm found God's amazing grace still amazes me now there are times I've walked away from the Lord my sins were many my heart grew cold fellowship was broken i fell so all alone but it didn't matter how far i'd gone god was still faithful when i came back home my sins were forgiven and grace to me was shown now i stand here before you tonight rejoicing everything's all right cause in my heart i know that i am saved and how i long just to do god's will yes i know i'll fail him still but i'm so glad that his grace, grace never will and i thank, thank the lord for the glorious night when the blessed holy ghost led me to the light at the altar where i prayed jesus washed my sins away and oh how sweet is the sound i once was lost but now i'm found god's amazing grace still amazes me and i thank the lord for the glorious night when the blessed holy ghost led me to the light at the altar where i prayed jesus washed my sins away and oh how sweet is the sound i once was lost but now i'm found god's amazing grace still amazes me and oh how sweet is the sound i once was lost but now i'm found god's amazing Still amazes me. Amen. Amen. It ought to amaze every one of us. Amen. We ought not to get over it. Amen. We ought not to forget we've been purged. All right. Take your Bible just for literally, I'm serious now, just a few minutes tonight because we got to get to the baptismal service. Take your Bible and go to Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Now, some of this is going to be uh, old truth to you, but thank God the Bible never grows old, amen? It's always fresh and it's always good. And we'll let you sing and again in a moment and then fellowship. And, and I tell you, we've got a good crowd of visitors and it'd be a good thing to just go across the aisle in a little bit and meet some of them, introduce yourself. We appreciate the family in the middle came this morning, come tonight, the Dickey family. We're glad you're back, amen. I mean it. We're glad you're back. We appreciate it. All right, Matthew chapter number 28. And uh, let's get this coat off first. I may need that in a little bit. <clears throat> this is for everybody that's in the building. Verse 16. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. I like that. But some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, 
all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, this is the Great Commission, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And the Bible says, Amen. If you'll look this way and look at your scripture as well, you have three major divisions or major emphasis in this on these few verses. What you have, first of all, don't forget this, you have the command to evangelize. The command to evangelize. Go ye therefore, look at verse 19, and teach all nations. You know the truth ought to be uh, here at home, but also the truth should be shed abroad. Amen? And spread abroad. We are commanded. We are commanded to evangelize. This church makes no apology for believing in worldwide evangelization. You know, why should we receive the gospel twice when there are some individuals in our world that have never heard it one time? And so if you do not believe in worldwide evangelism, then it would do you or serve you well to redirect your attention to this passage right here. We are commanded by God to evangelize. Amen. And then look at verse number 19 again and teach all nations, look at the second one, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. By the way, we believe in the Trinity. Amen. We are Trinitarians, all right? One God manifested in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There are not three gods, amen? There's only one God, and thank God manifested in three co-equal, co-existent, and co-eternal ways. And that again is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so secondly, not only are we commanded to evangelize, Brother Landy, but we are commanded to baptize, amen, to baptize. Now, you say, well, who are we supposed to baptize? We're supposed to baptize those that have been evangelized, amen. And you don't get baptized until, first of all, you get evangelized, amen. Don't get the cart before the horse. I wish I had a Bible reader. Say amen. In other words, baptism is for saved, born again, washed in the blood individual. And I'm glad at 16 years old, Brother John, thank God I was gloriously and wondrously evangelized. I was saved by the Rand, Brother Randy, by the good grace of God. And so not only was I evangelized, but thank God I was baptized. Amen. And that's what we're going to do tonight, all right? And by the way, I just want to say a word to the church this evening. All these candidates for baptism, we've met with all of them. We have emphasized repeatedly that salvation is the number one requirement, amen, not your name, not your social security number, not your status, not your family, not your pedigree, not your, not your ancestry, and not your wealth or your poverty. The number one requirement for anybody to be baptized is they must be a believer, amen. I mean, they must be a child of God. And by the way, a little commercial right here. Aren't you glad you're a child of God? Thank God I'm so saved. It's pitiful, amen. Thank God I'm saved forever. Thank God I'm kept by the power of God. I'm glad one day Jesus passed by. I'm glad he snatched me as a firebrand out of the burning, amen, and set my feet on a solid rock, established my going, and put a new song in my mouth. I thank Thank God tonight for salvation. 
If you don't get it, I'm trying to hurry. But with all these amens and this good liberty, I just may not succeed in trying to hurry. But I'll try my best, all right? In the Great Commission, number one, you have evangelized. Number two, you have baptized. And by the way, if you're in the building tonight and you're a believer, You've trusted Christ, but you've never taken the next step, and we can't do it tonight because we haven't sat down and talked to you, but every child of God needs to be baptized. Amen. Every saint of God needs to follow the Lord in believers. By the way, you know what? It's a command. You're going to get an amen right. It's a command. He told us to evangelize. Brother Randy, he told us to baptize, but look at the next verse. You'll love this. You'll love this. Look at verse 19. Well, verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. I love this outline. Here it is again, Brother Stewart. Evangelize, baptize, but watch this, stabilize. Amen. Stabilize. You say, how in the world? I appreciate the prayer, brother. I appreciate the prayer. He prayed that God would bless these new converts and let them grow and let them mature and let them wax strong. And that's what's found in that verse right there, teaching them to observe. What do you teach them? Well, you definitely don't teach them Hollywood and you don't teach them politics. And let me just say there ain't much to teach right there. I said there ain't much to teach right there. What are we supposed to be teaching new converts? The Word of God. I know this is going to sting a little bit. I'm not trying to be controversial, but I am going to be dogmatic and truthful with you tonight. You can't teach somebody if they're not there. I might as well hit that a little bit, hadn't I? You can't teach, you can't grow, you can't learn. You can't mature, you can't wax strong, you can't develop. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll never get stabilized. You'll never get stabilized until you make up your mind that you're going to get committed to God's church where God's church is preached on a regular basis. Thank God for a church, no matter what church you go to or no matter what church we go to, the main thing about a church is are they giving out the Word of God? Are they they given out the scripture. Uh, men grow by the word. Amen. Men mature by the word. And uh, men wax strong by the word. It's one thing to evangelize. It's one thing to baptize. But what good, Brother Walford, would it be to evangelize and then baptize if we didn't try to stabilize? Man, I tell you, folks, listen, man, I got to hurry up here, but I tell you, it's a sad day. It's a sad day when a person makes a profession and then they don't get in church. They're not discipled. They don't follow the Lord. You can't find them with the CIA or the FBI. They never go back to church. Now, let me look on up here. I believe God does a better job than that. Amen. Let me just put another commercial in right here. When God saves somebody, he puts the church in their heart. They'll want to go to church Sunday morning, and they'll want to go to church Sunday night, and they'll want to go to church Wednesday night, and it does not helping you to be out of church. It's not helping you to miss church. It's not helping you to have your life one time you were in church, and now you're not in church. Listen, you're going down the wrong path. You're going down the wrong road. You're going to make shipwreck of your life. You're going to make shipwreck of your life. Hey, friend, I need the church. Amen. Thank God I'm a part of the church. Brother Brian, I love the church. I'm glad I go to church on Sunday morning. I'm glad I go Sunday night. I'm glad I go Wednesday night. I know what you're thinking. Well, you're awful weak. No, friend, I'm not weak. I just need to be stabilized. Amen. Look at the verse. Look at the verse, everybody. Look at verse number 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. 
And by the way, all things is the complete revelation that we have of the Word of God. This is the manual, amen. This is the rules, amen. This is the steering wheel, amen, right there. This is the steering wheel. By the way, this is how you grow. First Peter chapter 2, that newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word that ye may grow thereby, amen. You'll never grow leaving out your Bible, and I love all of you, and I know who's here, and I know everybody that is here, and I love every one of you, but I want to tell you, the best days of your life, the best days of your life are when you are faithful to the house of God. Don't get out, please, please. Do not get out from underneath the umbrella of the safety of the local church. You may notice that we say brother and sister around here. It's because we're a family. And these folks are so dear. When one has a burden, we got some at the hospital right now. We'll check on them as soon as church is over. We checked on them already today. When one has a burden, we all shed a tear and rejoice in each victory that we all hold so dear. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God from the house of, a, or from the house of an orphanage out of the house of the king, uh, from being a beggar out of the child of the key. I know maybe some of you didn't come in and hear this tonight, but you'll never replace the church. Amen. I said you'll never replace the church. God didn't die. God didn't die for the club. God didn't die for the organization. And God didn't die for all the other things that are in society. But I'll tell you what he did do. Up Calvary's mountain, one dreadful morn, walk Christ my Savior, I weary and war. You know who he tasted death for he died for the church amen the bible said he loved the church brother randy brother Kylie said he loved the church and gave himself for it you say what are you preaching tonight i'm preaching on evangelize i'm preaching on baptize and i'm preaching on stabilize listen listen and i know some of you here tonight you might say well the church has hurt me or I've been disappointed in the church, or I've been let down in the church, or I've got my eyes on people in the church, or maybe I was discarded by the church, or maybe the church didn't have any use for me, or, or I didn't fit in the church, or, or, or I used to go to church, or I, I used to be a part of church, and I used to be faithful. Friend, I'm telling you, listen, I, don't, I know there's a thousand things you might could say, but I'm here to tell you tonight, the only way you're going to grow and the only way you're going to mature and the only way you're going to get strong is a steady diet of the Word of God. And you're not going to get the Word of God on the lake. You're not going to get, amen. You're not, you say, but I'm listening. Well, it's not the same. By the way, by the way, COVID about crippled everybody. COVID about crippled everybody. And by the way, I'm glad it's better now. I'm glad it's better now. Brother Paul, we had to do some of those, some of those YouTube church and online church, and I'd go home so depressed. That's right. I'd go home so depressed. Nobody here, me preaching to about eight people, have a little band of singers like some kind of traveling evangelist. Here's my singers. Here's my microphone. Preach to look at the camera up there, and ain't nobody in the house. I didn't like it a bit, and I still don't like it, and that's not church. Amen. <laughs> That's not church. I tell you what church is. I somebody grab that old fashioned hymnal and let's sing some songs. And somebody meet in the prayer rooms and somebody give their tithe and offering and hold on to your pew. Somebody go to Sunday school. I said somebody bring your kids to Sunday school and somebody rear back and pray and somebody get in that choir and sing and somebody get up here and say he's always been faithful. He's always been faithful. And thank God he has. I say to you tonight, where would my life be? And where would your life be? And where would your home and your family be without the influence of God's church? Amen. I've not, I've not got sour on the church. I said I've not got sour on the church. I'm not through with the church. 
I'm not give up on the church. I'm not quitting the church. I said, I'm not quitting the church. Hey, friend, hey, friend, I'm going to stay with the ship. I'm going to stay with the ship. I love it. 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 There have been times I've been down. There have been times I've been discouraged. There have been times I want to throw in the towel and give up and quit. Somebody get up and sing some God-anointed song, some Holy Ghost-filled song. And the Holy Ghost said, son, why don't you go another mile? Why don't you go another mile? There have been times my heart's been so heavy. My heart's been so broke. My heart said, you don't know disappointment. No, I don't. Do oh, yes, I do. There's been times I've been so disappointed, I could spell it with all capitals, all right? I said I could spell it with all capitals. But guess what? I'm not looking at people. I'm not, put, I'm not living for people. I'm not depending on people. I, Jesus has never failed. I, Jesus has never disappointed me. I, Jesus has never let me down. He's still the dearest friend I've ever had. I said he's still the dearest friend I've ever had. And by the way, by the way, being saved is still the best thing that's ever happened to me. I said it's still the best thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, friend. Don't, I don't know why I'm preaching this. Don't quit church. Don't get out of church. Don't give up on the church. Don't frown on the church. You say, well, there's hypocrites in the church. Well, well, you might could still go and just join them. Say, hey, man, yeah. that was free. That was free. Yeah. Everybody's not a hypocrite. Everybody hadn't let you down. Everybody hadn't done you wrong. Everybody hadn't disappointed you. You know what? You know what? Let me tell you this. I got to get to the water here in a minute. We'll, we'll get to the water. We'll get to the water, okay? But, you know, you go out maybe even tonight. The sky's beautiful. And, and it's, it's just like God, Lance, puts the stars on dress parade, and the moon's over here somewhere, and the Milky Way, whatever all that is, it's somewhere up there. And you just sit back, and man, what a beautiful night. Oh, you got your glass of sweet iced tea. I said, sweet iced tea. I said, don't you drink diet drinks? Do I look like I drink diet drinks? No, amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die happy. Say Amen. My, my wife, my wife, bless her heart, she gets me some pudding, and she got her some pudding. I'm serious now, and I ran out of my pudding because I ate it all, all right? It's the little snack packs, and so I said, well, all my pudding's gone. I'm going to get one of her pudding. Her pudding was sugar-free. It was the nearest nothing I've ever tasted. I told her today, she said, I want something sweet to eat. I said, why don't you get some of that junky pudding of yours? Sugar-free pudding. You know what I got to say about that? Never. <laughs> A little humor and not going to hurt anybody. But anyway, uh, well, how do I get off on pudding? I don't know. Sugar. How do I get off on sugar-free? Yeah, yeah, sweet tea, sweet tea. There you go. Sweet tea and, 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 oh, yeah, and a Twinkie or a chocolate, chocolate cake with that red jelly in it. Son, that's heaven, friend. I mean, or two or three Twinkies. My wife buys all this. She buys all this stuff for the grandkids, and guess who gets it all? I get it all. Thank God, and it's free. I done paid for it, amen. But anyway, you go out on a very, very beautiful night, a very beautiful night. I'm going somewhere, and the stars are out on dress parade. And all of a sudden, in that beautiful night, Brother David, one of the stars zooms across the sky. And they say, oh, look, 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 look. There's a fallen star. There's a fallen star, Brother Finley. You look at that fallen star and you watch it way off on the horizon. Brother Steve Abbott, and it goes and all of a sudden it disappears. And they say when you're little, they say when you're little, Brother Chris, what are you supposed to make a wish? Well, I made about 60 of them and didn't narrow one of them ever come true. So to forget all that, but here's my point. That one fallen star, Stacy gets all the attention. And everybody forgot. Miss Bethany, there's a million more. Still up there shining. And that's the way it is with the church. You may get hurt. You may get disappointed. Somebody may fall. Somebody may hurt you. Somebody may get out. Somebody may quit. Somebody may injure you. Somebody may wound you. And you've got your eyes on that one person from that one church, wherever that church is, and you just want to give up. But here's what you forgot. Here's what you forgot. God has 7,000 more. 
that have never bowed their knee to Baal. And they're still shining, friend. And they're still shining for the Lord. They're still up there shining. Who am I talking to? Don't quit because somebody hurt you. Don't, don't quit because somebody disappointed you. Get in church somewhere where they can give you the word of God. Get in church somewhere where they open up the Bible, where they open up the Bible and feed you, where they strengthen you. And so here's the plan, and I'm done. Here's the plan. Evangelize, baptize, and then stabilize, teaching them to observe all things. And in baptism, there's a motive. In baptism, there's a method, amen? And in baptism, there's a meaning, all right? I said there's a a motive, there's a method, and by the way, that method is immersion. I'm really not trying to be ugly. I'm not. I'm not trying. I don't want to be ugly. It's not right to be ugly. God don't like ugly. But listen, we're, we're we're not sprinkling the water on nobody. We're not sprinkling water on nobody. We're putting them under. And when Jesus was come up out of the water, and when the Ethiopian eunuch was come up out of the water, and Philip out of the water, how are you going to come up out of the water if you ain't in the water? Come on, that ought to make you smile. I said, how are you going to come up out of the water if you ain't first of all in the water? And listen, that's not in the water. That's not in the water. That's not in the scripture either. Not in the scripture. Y'all okay? Nobody okay? So I thought you was only going to preach 10 minutes. That's what you get for thinking. (laughs) I'm trying. I'm trying. There's There's a motive. That's obedience. That's obedience. There's a method. That's immersion. And there's a meaning. But what's the meaning? What's the meaning? The meaning is that we're fixing to identify ourselves with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's all in Romans chapter 6. To these converts tonight, I'm proud of you. I'm happy for you. Most of these are young adults. I've stressed to the parents that you ought to talk to your children and make sure that they're at peace with their salvation, and and they are, or we would not baptize them. But young people, I want you to know there is a motive, and that's obedience. There is a method, and that's immersion. And there is a meaning, and the meaning of baptism, the meaning of baptism is that we are identifying publicly that we believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And by the way, how many believe that tonight? Brother Pi, that's the gospel. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And by the way, Romans chapter 6 said that I've been baptized into Christ, that I've raised to walk in newness of life. That, so what we're doing outwardly is a symbol, a symbol and a picture of what's taking place inwardly. That's the meaning of baptism. Thank you for listening. I feel like the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has no doubt given somebody in this building a message tonight. And the message isn't even really the baptism. The message is don't give up on your commitment to church. Don't. Some of the greatest people on planet earth go to the house of God. They're my friends. They're my family. They're my co-workers, my co-laborers, and guess what? They're my prayer partners. Listen, if I was up there like Caroline tonight, if I was up there like Caroline, who knows, Brother Josiah, we might be there tomorrow night. You know what I'd want? I want someone to do an all call. Say, hey, y'all better, y'all better pray for the preacher. We got him up here fixing to do a CT scan on him. We don't know what's wrong with him. And don't say that can't happen. It could happen tonight. It could happen tonight. But I tell you, if it does, I don't want it to. Them Twinkies and all that other stuff, it may happen. But it, I don't want it to. But if it does, I want to be able, Brother Paul Abbott, to lay my head up there knowing I've got a church family. That's going to be calling my name out in prayer. 
Because they're saying, God, give them doctor's wisdom. Help him, Lord. Let them find out what's wrong with him. God, touch his body. God, take care of him. God, raise him up. And Lord, if it could be you, we'll get him out of the hospital as soon as possible before he gets some other sickness. Amen. I love the church family. I love the church family. God put me in one a long time ago, a long, long time ago, and he did you the same way. And all God's people said, now let's stand all over the building. Candidates, you're dismissed. All you baptismal candidates, you're dismissed. Brother Kyle's going to come with a congregational song, and then I'm going to go get ready, and then we're going to shake hands after that, Brother Kyle.